Hello, my friends. It's Friday. <laughs> it's definitely not Friday. It's definitely Wednesday. I'm going to let you on a secret. I'm honest with you, but welcome to Las Vegas. Welcome to MGM Grand. But we do have to kind of tell you that because, of course, make sure you check out Dynamite Ups and Downs from Wednesday. Usually you have a big old crowd for these things, and now I'm repeating myself. I apologize. Just go watch that video. You know, I'm not going to explain it again. <laughs> There's lots of different reasons. But what we thought we'd do, just because we have a lot to do out here in Vegas, because we've never done it before, we have seen Rampage, but we haven't seen all of Rampage. We've just seen the matches of Rampage, and we don't know what else is going on. So we thought, let's just do it, because it will be fun, and it also means we can put it live straight away, and we can just watch what happens with the numbers. That's right. I'm letting you in on all of our secrets. So it's going to be like a 75% review of Rampage, but it's fun to do different things, especially for me. I have to watch a lot of wrestling content. So if we can ever change it up a little bit, that makes me a happy man. It makes me happy in my brain. Anyway, I can also tell you some secrets, more secrets. You the word secrets. Jericho came to the ring before Rampage, just went crazy at everyone because he was so mad about what had happened on Dynamite. And he did, again, once again, I said it on that show too. He did his whole, I'm a tough guy, but I'm actually terrified. It was so good. And when you watch it, you're like, that's why Chris Jericho is a star. I don't think it aired. I'm 99% sure it didn't, but it was so funny. He told everyone to stop selling his song. He went out in front of everyone and just started pointing and yelling. I loved it. Chris Jericho is the absolute man. Which brought us to our first match, which was Roos Jalisco and Preston Vance taking on the acclaimed, and my word, the pop that the acclaimed got. They are still over, man. People still love them. And it really, it made me excited. I love those guys. Obviously, everyone loves the acclaimed. This is just a really good match. At one point, Jalisco pretended he was going to do the scissor, and for some reason, Anthony Bowens bought this. <laughs> so I don't know what he was doing there. But Max Caster got his revenge, because he got, he got uh, who did he get? Preston Vance's arm, and he humped it. That's right. He thrust it in the general, general direction of somebody's arm, and it was weird. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it was really strange. The other thing is, is that Billy Gunn is crazy over. Like, hearing it live was something else entirely. There's a crazy man yelling over there. Welcome to Las Vegas, I suppose. And... Um, the tag clacks that went off at one point, honestly, it was so random. Nothing was even happening. Huh? Everyone just ran in the ring. But what I really have to talk about, and I forgot to mention this on AEW, but that's okay. I think people knew I was in the building, which is very, very kind. I'm being facetious and joking, by the way. Because not one person got thrown into Barry Barricade. I had a tear in my eye. I was emotional. It's that man, Justin for Barry, has finally arrived on the 23rd of May, 2023. Then on this show... Four people got thrown into Barry Barricade. We'll go through them one by one, put up on the counter. I've got it written down. That's 25. This was out of control, though. As ever, do you know how hard it was for me to see this happen live in front of my eyes? No one cares about Barry apart from me, and I'm totally sick of it. Anyway, eventually, we got the arrival. We got the mic drop. One, two, three. Bowens won, and afterwards, and this is the whole reason we did this match. He gets the microphone. He says, listen, House of Black, essentially, we won a match. Now... The, gra the match graphic will probably drop or we'll probably do something on Rampage to confirm that. But I'd be absolutely amazed if we get to double or nothing and we don't have the Acclaim versus the House of Black. Which is an interesting match. Should the Acclaim lose? No. Should the House of Black lose? No. Also, what's the stipulation going to be? I don't know. I shrugged my shoulders. So kind of oddly, we then went from one trios match to another trios match. Now again, they're going to shove some things in between, of course. But it was the Guns and Ethan Page taking on some guys. Now again, usually we'd know the name of some guys. I didn't hear the name of some guys, but it's quite obvious it was going to be a, a, a squash match. But straight away, somebody got thrown into Barry Barricade. Ethan Page did this too. Do you know how much I love Ethan Page? I love him like a mother, a brother, a son, a granddad. Maybe a faraway auntie you only see a couple of times a year, but you miss her. And absent makes the heart grow fonder. What a 180. Upsets me, man. Trying so hard to protect somebody and nobody cares. But this was over pretty quickly. They did this awesome three-way face buster thing. And essentially, Ethan Page gets to the microphone and says, we're a team, you're not a team. You know, Harley boys. You don't even have Isaiah K... Isaiah K I can't even talk about his name. Brother, Brother Zay would just call him Isaiah Cassidy anymore because they took him out with the Pilmanizer, which I was happy. If you Pilmanize somebody's neck, they should be out for a while. When the Hardys came out once again to a mega pop, they're so over, it's crap. I don't I think you actually know until you're in the building. People love those guys. They're like, we'll stay, we'll take you on three on two. We don't care. When Brother Zay was here, he made some orgasm noises, ah, which is what he does. And they have a replacement. This was so obvious. And I didn't even see it coming. It was Hook. They ran to the ring. They chased the bad guys off. I'm looking forward to this match. Double or nothing is going to be a long old pay-per-view. If Do something different here. You absolutely have the power. And I'm going to give it an up. I don't think I gave an up for the first match, too. But it's going to happen. Which brought us to Nyla Rose and, Mich and Marina Shafir taking on Sheeta and Britt Baker. And Phil and I were both walking around going, wait a minute. Now, it actually made me happy. Nyla Rose should be featured more. 
you can hear the stuff that she says. Like she's like a Kevin Owens, right? She says stuff during her matches. When you can actually hear it live, it's super duper funny. And AEW absolutely has to start featuring more and absolutely lets, has to let her start being herself. She's hilarious. And she makes me laugh. Now, obviously, you knew what was going to happen here. She'd have got the hot tag. They beat the crap out of them. Eventually, she applied the lock draw on Marina. And she got the tap out victory. And I think the main reason we did this is I forgot we're not doing the Outcast versus the OG match next. The big match of the pay-per-view was going to be Jamie Hayter taking on Tony Storm. Well, Jamie Hayter is injured, like properly injured. So, again, we cut to the big screen. And the Outcast have beaten her up. And they're just, just lying on the floor with shoulder tape all around. So, it's probably also been announced that title match is off. We probably also have a replacement match. It's probably going to be Tony Storm versus Britt Baker or Tony Storm versus Shida. You would have to imagine, which is still perfectly fine. I hope they don't can everything entirely, though, because there certainly is a slot for that. And while this was a very weird tag team match, <laughs> it just was so out of nowhere. For Nyla Rose's contributions alone, I'm giving it an up. She's absolutely awesome. When we did get to the, to the main event, which was Lee Moriarty and Big Bill taking on the best friends, and as we started to notice, there was a bunch of people at ringside. We had the Lucha Brothers, as well as Commander, we think. The Varsity Athletes were there. Butcher and the Blade and Kip Sabian are there, who'd also seen earlier in the tapings that we went to, because they were on the Ring of Honor show. And man, they squashed some fools. That was over in about 82 seconds. And I, at first, was like, well, given the Lucha Brothers are here, maybe this is going to be something to do with the Ring of Honor tag team titles. And it still may be. But given the fallout at the end, I think this all tied into the Blackjack Casino Battle Royale. So I'm massively intrigued to see what we're going to do with that because there's some random faces in it anyway. Barry Barricade got assaulted once more. Big Bill thought it'd be hilarious to throw someone into that, which annoyed me because I was sat in that crowd singing your praises, Big Bill. I was like, your name's Bill and you're big and AEW probably could utilize you more in a singles role should they so wish and they probably will in the future. That was four times, which brings us up to 28 on the Barry Barricade counter. I started this three weeks ago. Three weeks and we're up to 28 times. What I'm even meant to do. No one cares, apart from you and I. But very sadly, nobody cares about you and I, so we are totally screwed. Eventually, Big Bill hits a suplex on Trent, I think it was. No, it was Chuck. One, two, three. Trent and Chuck and other ones, by the way. You watch them live. Funny, hilarious, awesome. I thought they were great. But this is when it all got interesting, because obviously, everyone starts beating everybody else up. Orange Cassidy comes out to make the save. Brian Cage is then there. Then comes out Keith Lee and Dustin Rhodes. Swerve walks out. He just looks at Keith Lee and he leaves. And I'm like, that's weird. Which kind of brings up a little bit of a dilemma. Like, I don't mind Brian Cage being in it. Obviously, Orange Cassidy has to be in it. I don't mind all the Butcher and the Blade, the Athlete, the Lucha Brothers, etc., etc. Are we not going to do Swerve versus Keith Lee on this pay-per-view? How you doing, man? Ups and downs, brother. Thank you very much. There we go. It's always one. I told you. If we don't do Keith Lee versus Swerve Strickland on this pay-per-view, I may have to move to another dimension. Don't know how I'm going to do that. Going to have to invent some kind of portal or some kind of technology and go, it's time. <laughs> it is time to do it. And I get you can do a little spot in the Battle Royal. Find 10 minutes on the card. And again, I don't have much context here because I only saw it in the live surroundings and the live parameters. I've got the fear, my friends. We need to see Keith Lee versus Swerve Strickland which brought us to the end of Rampage. It's kind of hard to judge it for obvious reasons, but I thought all the matches we did see were good. I'm going to give it an up. It just would be nice maybe if there was a little bit more context to things. Again, Marina Shafir and Nyla Rose all of a sudden being on it when we haven't seen them in a while. Again, the commentators may be saying something, but everything's always a little bit better with the story. But I give it an up overall. It was cool to be there live. It was cool to see it. And it was cool to get to see some other wrestlers as well. Like, I've never seen Sheeda wrestle live. I don't think I've ever seen Britt Baker wrestle live. I probably saw it all in, actually. But that stuff is just cool. Like, it really, really is. And I liked it a lot, especially because I got to see Kip Sabian twice on this evening. I'm a big fan of Kip Sabian. So that does kind of oddly bring the end to our television portion of the ups and downs here in our AEW week. But again, double or nothing on Sunday. We'll def that will be raucous. So if you want to prepare yourselves now, you totally can. But before that, like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Make sure you watch all the videos we're doing from Vegas. That would be massively appreciated. Whatculture.com. Just take care of yourself, I suppose. Take care of other people. Be nice. Come play $1 Blackjack. It's open 24-7. It's a lie poster. We Earlier, it was not, it was not open at 9 a.m. this morning. Can guarantee all you that. It makes you sound like a gambling addict. It's not true at all. Let's not talk about it. Feel like, feel like we're walking down a bad path. Take care of yourself, my friends. I'm off to play some blackjack. <laughs>